Welcome, Donna Zyderwig. I'm so excited to be on, to have you be a guest on our podcast. And I know you're a busy woman. So thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate being here. So give us a little background on, you know, how you ended up at the library and what was the attraction there and your role? Yeah, well, um, I, I've been at the library, this Columbus Metropolitan Library. I've worked here in three times. This is my third time. Uh, so I'm a library gal. I, of course, have the story of visiting the library and have a, a love of the library that started in childhood and then was fortunate to have it as a job in college. So among other jobs, I worked at the Gehanna branch of the, the library and then graduated, uh, worked for a little while in administrative, then went on and did other things, came back in development uh, as a fundraiser and was did that role uh, for 10 years for the library and then left for a period of time. And then uh, more recently came back as the chief community engagement officer. So I keep, you know, they keep inviting me back. So uh, I feel fortunate that to be in this role and to be representing the library and working here now. I understand you have a, a variety of different types of teams. Can you kind of you know, give us a little snapshot of what that's like. We have a four member executive leadership team and each one of the executive leadership team members has a variety of uh, um, functional areas that uh, report to them. So I uh, have the development team, the marketing, marketing and communications team, strategic initiatives and advocacy team, the collection services team, and then uh, just recently uh, now have responsibility for um, our HR function as well. So uh, it's a big, big footprint. Wow. How do you keep it straight? That's a lot of responsibility. I have really great directors. Uh, so uh, that actually lead each of those areas. So I feel extremely fortunate. I, my, uh, I mostly just try to stay out of their way, take, take away obstacles and be a, a good sounding board and uh, provide kind of organizational vision and some strategy. But the beauty of it is when you have great leaders in those functional areas, it makes, makes my job much easier for sure. So in this digital world, right, how was the library be able to transition between digital and now it's COVID and then you know, it's like back and forth and how is it able to flex in this kind of environment? Yeah, well, I've been around a pretty long time and I remember there was a period of time where ebooks were starting to really ramp up and everybody was kind of hearkening the end of libraries because everyone was going to start reading everything, um, ebooks and the print, print book was going to go away. And of course, none of that has come to fruition. I, I think that there's certainly people who have adopted and embraced the um, electronic um, resources, electronic books and, and, um, and more, but um, people still love libraries and still love print. Uh, what, one of the things that happened, of course, during uh, the greatest period of COVID was that we had to close our, our doors uh, for a period of time. And so, uh, when we did that, one of the things that we did immediately was to put a tremendous influx of, of money and uh, effort into digital resources. And so we really stepped up what we were offering in, um, in e-resources and e-books. And we are transitioned a lot of our programming to virtual. So we were doing uh, a significant amount of that. And I would say we're, we're starting to transition some of that back. Uh, we have more of a combination now, but we are still really emphasizing and putting a lot of time and attention and effort into uh, eBooks and really trying to make sure that we have a very robust collection for uh, individuals who are not yet um, ready to maybe come back to the library and browse, but are, are still looking for good things to read and um, for not only for themselves, but for their children. So then with all this transition, how do you see the future of the library? What do you think that would look like in 10 years? 
Oh, I, you know, the future of the library will all, will always remain bright. Uh, I think the um, you know the the maybe one of the the myths or the uh, the common thinking is that libraries are uh, mostly about books and you know, that's a very significant portion of it, of course, but we have uh, really always been an organization that's really embedded into the community and have, uh, it's really about uh, spaces to, to learn, um, to connect with people, uh, you know, meeting rooms, um, school help, like there's so many other things that people use libraries for, and we are just continuing to really uh, expound on that and invite people to really understand the full breadth of what the library has to offer. And so I think that the future will always be bright for libraries because their libraries are innovative. Uh, they're always looking at community need and trying to meet that community need. And uh, that's been the case from the minute we opened our doors almost 150 years ago now um, and will remain the case, I think, far, far, far into the future. So one out of five Franklin County households remain without internet availability. How do you achieve being everything to everyone in this kind of space? Our library branches have been one of the primary places that people have been able to go to access the uh, internet for a, a, quite a long period of time. Uh, and that's something that we've always been really proud of. One of the things that we really recognized when we had to close our doors is that really cut off access for a lot of people who desperately needed it in a time that they needed it more than any, ever. Uh, it's one of the reasons why we actually uh, have helped to lead a, a coalition that's really working on broadband access for our community. It's a, um, it's a large coalition of uh, organizations in Columbus who are really trying to put some effort into uh, trying to solve that problem for our community because it's so significant. Uh, it will continue to be something that we offer, um, broadband, wireless access uh, for sure, but uh, recognizing that we, you know, as a community, we have such significant portions of our of our um, community members who really need greater access than what even the library can provide. And so it's really a combination of not only continuing for us to, to provide that uh, in our branches and our locations uh, as best we can, and then also really trying to be on the forefront of the conversation about how we need to bring that to our community as a whole. So you're really positioning the library as a community center, really, is the big picture, correct? Yeah, that's how we think of ourselves, for sure. <laughs> um, uh, you know, uh, not only um, a community center, but a great community partner, uh, you know, all the things that uh, um, are important. I, I think we have an obligation uh, because of where we sit in the community uh, because uh, we're taxpayer supported and we as well. And so we wanna make sure that the investment our community makes in libraries is returned uh, many fold uh, in their experiences that they have and what we contribute to the community. So if the library receives levy support, mm -hmm. what roles do the friends of the library and the foundation play in argu augmenting that support? Yeah, well, um, our friends at the library are um, wonderful uh, group of community members, uh, community volunteers who uh, really have have helped to uh, kind of innovate. They they provide some of the special experiences that you might have find at the. Uh, at the library, for instance, the coffee shop at Main Library is a friend of the library activity. And so they're constantly looking at um, ways that they can um, earn money. Um, and that money then helps support some of our programs 
They're also a group that really helps us to advocate for uh, you know, a variety of things that come up um, when there is a, a, an opportunity to tell the library story in, in a particular way. Our friends at the library always step up to do that. Um, so they are an important group for us and have been for many years. Uh, we also now have our foundation, the Columbus Metropolitan Library Foundation, and we recognize that there are, even with um, the generous support of our taxpayers, that there are things that we would like to do and um, opportunities that are, uh, that we'd like to capitalize on that uh, not you know, that donor dollars are uh, maybe best used for that. Uh, we have a lot of people who love the library and want to express that in ways uh, um, in, in their philanthropy. And so we've really, that's where the foundation comes in. They're the, uh, the group and the individuals that help us to determine what we might fundraise, how we might use that money. Um, they really just uh, have a, uh, are great resources to, for us as we think about all the ways that we support the community and where, um, where there is opportunity for donors to help make that even more possible. So with the library being a safe place for teens and, and young folks, how do you keep them engaged with so much digital, you know, apps and the phone and the how do you keep them engaged? You know, the short answer is that we have a lot of things that we're, we have great um, uh, team members and our community, they get to know the, the students and the kids as they come in. Uh, it's about those relationships. And so they, uh, so often they come back because they are really, um, have developed a strong relationship with our team members. And so they feel that it's a sense of community when they go to our locations. And so we really try to foster that as much as possible. But there's also a variety of programming that we do. We have uh, for each um, kind of age group of, of individual that comes into our library branch, we have uh, team members who are thinking about how to interact and provide programming and and opportunities for them. And so it's really uh, a constant, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a constant innovation. It's always thinking about, well, trying to meet those, those particularly the, the, the kids, the young adults, uh, wherever they are, um, try to um, really support whatever needs that they have, whether it's, uh, you know, whether it's school, um, uh, whether it's out, you know, recreation and things that they're interested in that they want to explore, uh, we really put a lot of time and energy into thinking how best we can support that. What do you think is the biggest challenges libraries are facing today? The biggest challenge that the library faces today is really the challenges that we see in each of our communities, right? Um, because the library is in, in each of in each community, whether it's Driving Park or Dublin, there's something unique to that. Uh, community and each community has its own challenge. Uh, and then of course, there's just Columbus as a whole. Uh, and we really see in our, in our buildings and our location, a real reflection of the things that are happening in Columbus. And so when you think about um, evictions and um, poverty, when you think about the uh, challenges with childcare, when you think about um, gosh, uh, safety and security, like all of those kinds of things are things that we see reflected in the customers that come into our locations. And so just continuing to, um, to be a part of the conversation about how we can make our community stronger, how we can help to solve some of those, those issues that continues to be a challenge the um, ability to meet that level of need um, and, and uh, to prepare our staff and our team members in those locations to be able to meet that level of need. Those are all things that we think about every day uh, and, and continue to, will we'll always, will probably always be the challenge that needs to be met in libraries. Um, you know, it's really, it's really the, the challenges that the community brings to us that we, uh, that we continue to, to try to meet. So with your 
background from the zoo and at the library and a variety of different places. Um, as a woman professional, what do you see a lot of women-owned businesses mistakes they make? Well, I, I don't know. I've not, um, I've not necessarily been as active from a business perspective, I guess, in the, in the women-owned business realm. But I, I will say that uh, just in my experience as a female professional uh, and in my own career, it is, uh, I think some of the mistakes are really not taking enough ownership of your own future and um, your own destiny. Uh, I think we are sometimes a little bit reluctant to put ourselves out there. And uh, I think that is uh, an area where we all need to, not only do we need to be uh, more, um, you know, forward in that, but we also need to support our female colleagues when they do uh, and help li to lift them up. I think I've been extremely fortunate to have had a number of really wonderful mentors. And in some cases, they've kind of come to me almost um, versus me seeking them out. And I think if I hadn't had that, those experiences and, and the benefit of those relationships, I'm not sure that I'd be in the place that I am now. Um, so when we have, we have a number of, uh, one in particular, a leadership development group here at the library, and we had a, a new class that came through and I had a similar question that was asked of me. And I said, you know, just really kind of like owning your path. And, um, I don't know, honestly, if I've ever really said no to anyone who asked me for, 15 minutes or, or even longer of time in order to talk about their journey. And I think we just need to do more to reach out and to support, support that, reach out for ourselves and then to support that when we, when we do get that um, opportunity for our female colleagues. So you must have a lot of passion for this business if you've returned back to the library. Yeah. <laughs> Like, what is it about it that just, you're just like, that is so like awesome. Like what drives you about it? That's a, a great question that has kind of a big answer, but I, I think there, there's a couple of things. One is, um, you know, when I was growing up, I mean, truly like the library was such a wonderful haven for me. And so the idea that we continue to offer that in our community for, for um, anyone, any of our customers who need it, uh, it, that I think is, so just having that best possible experience for anyone on our community who's seeking something and can find it at the library. So that's probably number one. It's a very kind of emotional and very, um, you know, it harkens back to my own childhood and, and my, like, of what I found in libraries that I, I really want other people to have that same experience. That's, that's the first thing. Um, it, you know, the second thing is just the, the, the idea of reading and literacy and how that brings people together and the stories that are told and, and books, you know, I, I love that. I think that's, that's definitely an element of it. But even beyond that, what has really, uh, what I'm truly invested in is really the community conversation. And it's, it's, it's key to my role as the chief community engagement officer. It's really about that, those partnerships, that connection. It's the appreciation of our role in the community and what we can offer and how we can be a valuable partner to, to um, the city, to um, the schools, to, uh, you know, any of nonprofit organizations. I mean, it's just endless. And so that being a part of the conversations in Columbus about how we can make this community um, better, greater is, uh, is the thing that I, that really I think keeps bringing me back and uh, is what is so wonderful about the kind of day-to-day -day work that I get to do. So when it's all said and done, yeah. what kind of legacy do you want to leave behind? Wow, that's, that's such a big question, legacy. Well, you know, I think legacy is really also in, um, the legacy is, is really in the work and the team. And, uh, and I find, 
you know, I've I said in the beginning here about how grateful I am to get to work with the people that I do. I really truly believe that every day is is a gift, and so to be able to, um, you know, have a hand in the growth and development of uh, this organization and the team is is really uh, is really fantastic. I now, because of uh, my role currently, am being uh, actively involved in a couple of new library branches that we're developing. So we're rebuilding the Hannah branch and we're, uh, we're going to be rebuilding the Reynoldsburg branch. And man, like I, I was, when I had got the, you know, my CEO said, hey, I want you to, I want you to do this like I was giddy. Like I went home and told my husband, it's like, can you imagine that I'm going to, that I'm going to get an opportunity to, to really um, be actively involved in what a library looks and feels like um, for those communities. It's just, it's tremendous. I think. Um, so the idea that something like that, that I will have, I'll have a hand in that. Uh, and that that library branch will live on for many, 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 many years in those communities. That's that's a pretty darn big deal. So there's lots of things, I guess. Oh, that's wonderful. I think that's awesome. So with diversity, you know, in the library and the catalog offerings and working, you know, giving opportunities for diverse businesses, what what are you guys doing as a library to kind of incorporate, you know, shifts in that right now? From a, um, a diversity and kind of vendor and relationship, we had started that uh, and worked really hard on that even early, particularly around our building projects, recognizing that um, we had an opportunity with the work that we were doing in the community to really make sure that we were lifting up minority um, businesses and, and really focusing on diversity there. Um, you know. I think obviously everyone had a wake up call more recently uh, and recognized that the things that we were doing were, were not enough. And um, so we, as an organization, have really been committed to, first of all, and primarily looking at our internal uh, team, like looking internally at our organization to say, okay, well, are we doing enough? We're, we're going through um, an audit of the em employee experience right now, trying to understand uh, what we can do, what more we can do and how we can be thinking about um, the way that we, you know, what we're providing and how we're thinking about diversity in our own organization. Um, so there's lots of different elements there, uh, lots of training and thought I read somewhere or heard somewhere that we're not supposed to talk about it as training. I've got to remember that. Um, but anyway, um, but really uh, thinking really deeply about, uh, you know, what we're offering to our um, employees and how that employee experience is um, taking shape. Also recognizing that we have a ways to go for our employee base to reflect our community. And so we're thinking more about recruitment and how we can be uh, much more um, open-minded about how we're uh, hiring for a lot of the positions that we have available. So there's that internal focus. And then the other piece is that we are recognizing that we have resources that we want to make sure that the community have access to. So if you wanna read, white fragility, if you want to, um, uh, you know, uh, read uh, um, Ibram X. Kendi's book, if you like making sure those resources are um, available to people, and then we are doing our own series called Speak Up, Speak Out, where we are inviting people to read some of those resources and then to take pay place in some conversations some panel discussions about, about it, what it means for our community. So, it's a variety of things. It's like, okay, well, there's the, there's the vendor and the relationship piece, there's the internal piece, and then there's what, as an organization, the library, what we have to offer the community as everyone tries to really advance that conversation. That sounds great. I appreciate all the work you're doing, and thanks so much for coming on to our podcast. 
Oh, well, it's my pleasure. Thanks so much for inviting me. I really appreciate it.